This pair of Lambs Boulder boots are my most worn pair of boots over the duration of this channel for the last two and a half years, but they're not without their major faults. And Limbs just released a new version of this boot that looks like it has a lot of improvements and upgrades that might fix some of those issues. So we're gonna chop it in half, see what's on the inside, and run it through our test to really see what's what with this Limbs and see if it is a new and improved version or just a facelift on the old Boulder boots. And thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Anytime you're on the internet, you have information going out and there's information coming in and a VPN essentially makes an encrypted tunnel that allows you to surf the internet and gather that info without any of your info being able to be stolen. And NordVPN is one of the best and they've been a long time sponsor of the channel. The one thing I really like is you can choose from over 5,300 servers across the world to help you protect yourself, but also it allows you to have access to content that might not be available in your area. So all you do is change your area with your VPN and it allows you to have access to what's available in that area. And it's super easy to use. It's literally just a one click auto connect once you have it installed so it's an easy way to protect yourself and going back to people trying to steal your information the way part of the way they do it is with phishing where they use uh, imposter links that mimic legitimate organizations or platforms or even apps. And as soon as you click into it, it'll open up a page that looks just like the page you're supposed to be going into. But when you put your credentials in, instead of you logging into whatever, it just steals your info and then logs in and steals whatever you're trying to protect with that account. And NordVPN is one of the easiest and best ways to protect yourself online from that type of phishing scam. So go to nordvpn.com slash Roseanneville or the links in my description to get yourself four months for free with a two-year plan. So check them out below and thanks again to NordVPN. Now let's go over the history of LEMS. So it all started in 2008 when the owner of LEMS, Andrew Raidmacher, was sick of trying to find an anatomical natural foot-shaped shoe. So we went to work designing his own. And from 2008 to 2011, Andrew studied how to make footwear, how to last shoes, how to make patterns for them, to create his own perfect pair of foot, uh, shoes that fit the human foot. And then after all that studying in 2011, he launched his very first boot, the Primal. From 2011 to 2018, Limbs continued to develop new footwear, new patterns, new styles, all with the same goal of making foot-shaped footwear. And fast forward to 2022, Andrew continues to grow the business, expand the brand, come out with new models, and that's where we ended up today with our latest release, the Summit boot that's very similar to the Boulder boot. So now that we've gone through the history, what are the flaws that I was talking about with their original Boulder boot? Well, there's just not a lot of grip on the sole because it's just literally a foam outsole. There's no rubber at all. And because the sole is, is just foam and it's really thin, you really start wearing through that sole in a hurry and it compresses to where you lose a lot of the squish over time. They really aren't great for around water and dirt because of how low the, the tongue is gusseted and they're not waterproof. And the leather is fine, but it has a really heavy pigmented layer on top and I just don't love the plaid lining on their on their boots. It's just not my favorite. But what is it that I like about the Boulder boot that made me wear it more than any other boot? Well, it's a super wide toe box that doesn't look super wide. That mock toe stitch hides it. It's nearly a zero drop shoe. There's very little heel on it. It's super flexible, bendable. There's no metal in it. It's a perfect travel shoe. And what do I actually use these for in my everyday life that makes them so worn? Well, I just call them my shop slippers because I, I never time. I just slip my foot in there. They're super comfortable while still maintaining some of the important features of a boot. And I also use them as a recovery boot because I'm breaking in so many boots so often that sometimes I just have to have a really basic foot shaped boot that has almost it has no arch support, no heel, the no wide or no squishy toe box for my toes. It's just as natural of a foot to recover from. For instance, those Alden boots, they have that little patch of foam at the heel. I wore them to a Bad Omens concert for like four or five hours and my heel has been wrecked for two or three weeks since. And I, I've been wearing this pair of bowling boots to recover from that because that stupid patch of foam. So that's why I love them. And now I'll start going through the details of this and compare the two and see what they've improved, what they haven't, and see if they've fixed those issues. So if we look at the leather on the limbs, like I mentioned, it's a fine leather. It's a, it's a little bit on the thin side of just under two millimeters. It's heavily pigmented. It still has the grain in it, but it's just, it's just not the best leather you can get. Versus the new Boulder boot, is more of a, a higher quality leather. You can see it has a natural grain. If you look at the cross section on the macro lens, it has plenty of the grain. 
It has a little bit of a buffed surface, so this would be a corrected grain or a waxed nubuck leather where they've lightly sanded the surface to remove a lot of the flaws and inconsistencies. And the thickness of the Summit leather is 2.3 millimeters thick, so a lot thicker, more in that boot range that you really want to see in a durable pair of boots. But we also burned this leather and you can see there's no heavy plastics on, on the top or there's no there's really no pigment at all. So to me, this is a better leather. It's going to last longer. It's going to give you more protection and it's just going to look better as it ages compared to their, their leather has a really heavy pigment on top. Another important difference between these two boots is the tongue difference. The original boulder boot is not, not gusseted at all. So when you're any, around any water or dirt, it's going to inevitably work its way to the inside of the boot, which I don't love, especially for a shop boot, but the Summit boot is gusseted up to the second eyelet. So it's gonna give you a lot more protection. And the way they do their mock toe stitch is different between these two boots as well. Cause you see on the regular boulder boot, it's a typical two piece mock toe stitch where that top panel and the side panel are two different pieces with a little seam there. If you haven't seen the, everything you need to know about mock toe boots, I go through all the detail and all the mock toes differences on the Rose Animal 2 channel, I'll put a link below. Versus the Summit boot is not even necessarily a mock toe boot, it more is just like a regular boot with a little bumper that goes around the side, but it still has the mock toe look, so I'm considering it a mock toe. Speaking of the tongue and stuff getting to the inside, the Summit boot is waterproof and we ran a waterproof test as you can see and it is waterproof compared to the boulder boot that's not gusseted is not even remotely waterproof. And then if we start working to the inside of the boot, one thing that I love is they've gotten rid of the plaid lining, but the boulder boot does have a little bit of an advantage over the Summit in one specific spot and that's the counter cover. Because the Summit is a waterproof boot, you can't do that internal counter cover stitch whereas the boulder boot you can. And so with the boulder boot, you have that little patch of fake leather. It's gonna give you a little bit more grip on your heel so it doesn't slip, and it's gonna give you a little bit more wear protection. Then if we pull the insoles out, you can see, first of all, how anatomical the shape of the shoe actually is from the insole compared to literally any other shoe. And the difference between the two, the Summit versus Boulder, is the Summit has technically a dual density insole, but I don't really think it does a whole lot because these aren't like, they're just a foam insole, and the boulder boot just has a single density foam but really they're about the same. And then if we get to the midsole, so this is really where the differences between the two boots are starting to show because the boulder boot, the midsole is essentially the outsole because underneath the insole with a little bit of foam underneath, you have a layer of foam that also acts as the outsole. There's no independent layer, there's no skin on top, it's just that foam acting as the midsole. Versus the Summit boot, I think and I am assuming that it has a similar midsole layer, about the same thickness and everything, but it has the advantage of having a rubber sole glued on the bottom. And that kind of brings us to the outsoles because the Summit boot, you can see it has a little bit of a luggy outsole. It's like the herring bones, it gripped a little bit more in dirt because that was one of the issues I have with the limbs just as a, a, a hiking boot or an outdoor boot because it's all foam and it doesn't have a heavy lug pattern. These really are a very light hiking boot, if at all. It, you really can't take these hardly anywhere. They're great for comfort, but they're not great for outdoors. So that was a huge thing that I was really glad to see with this Summit boot, that they actually gave it a nice, thick, durable outsole. So we did a, a puncture test on this just to be able to see how it compares to the boulder. So we did the boulder boot first, which remember is just literally a foam midsole as the outsole and it only took 12 and a half pounds to pierce through. So you want to avoid sharp stuff in the boulder boots. But how did the Summit perform? So we threw it on the test and it took 48 pounds to pierce through the outsole. So still not great, but it's at least more than 12 pounds and you're going to be, you're going to have some protection. Like sharp, sharp rocks will eat this outsole up with the Summit outsole being rubber. It's, it's going to stand that just fine. And going back to what we talked about in the beginning, the flexibility is different in these boots. You know, the boulder boot is very flexible. It's malleable. You can throw it in a backpack and it'll pop back into place. The Summit is still flexible, but it's not nearly as flexible as the boulder, but significantly more flexible than basically any boot that has a layer of leather or thick rubber throughout the outsole. Like it's still ridiculously malleable and flexible. Like most boots, you would never be able to do that. So it still has some of those attributes that I really like about the Boulder boot, including the lightweightness, because we, we weighed the Boulder boot is 11.6 ounces. The Summit is one pound, 1.8 ounces. And the last thing to cover before we cut it in half is the construction. And both of these boots are cemented construction. So there's no stitching holding the soles on. It's all cemented. It's all just glued together. But I haven't ever had any issues with any of the pairs that I've owned of limbs delaminating or coming apart at all, so I wouldn't really stress that too much, but it's good to note that there's no stitching holding this outsole on. So now let's cut these in half.
All right, we've got them chopped in half and the other thing I really love about these boots is they're the easiest boots to cut in half on the bandsaw. So let's see what's inside. You can see that it has exactly what we expected. That midsole layer that acts as the outsole on the boulder boot is a true midsole layer on the summit. And it is pretty close to a zero drop, not quite as much as the boulder boot. It has a little more drop than that boot, but still is really, really close to a zero drop shoe. And one thing worth noting about this is if you get a pair of these, make sure you ease your way into them because I was used to wearing a heeled boot. And the first couple of weeks I wore these, it wore my calf out because it was stretching my tendons and my calf muscles in a way that I hadn't felt in a long time because I wasn't ever walking around barefoot all day and my calf muscle that has shrunk is, is kind of what I was thinking. So ease into them if you get a pair of these. And I wanted to do a quick test on the durometer of the midsoles and the boulder boot midsole, the cross section came in at a 40 shore A and the summit midsole came in at a 25 shore A. So the summit does have a, just a little bit softer midsole, which makes sense because it's a harder foam for a boot that uses the midsole as an outsole it makes sense to have it a little bit harder. And now too, does this boot fix all the flaws that I had or noticed in the boulder boot? Flaw number one, the boulder boots don't have a lot of grip. That has been fixed in the summit. The boulder boot is has a really thin foam sole that has also been fixed in the summit. The boulder boots are not great around water or a lot of dirt that has been fixed in the summits. The boulder boots just don't have the best leather. It's fine, but it's just not the best. The Summit boot fixes that as well by having this wax nubuck oily leather that I really like. And maybe most important of all, did they get rid of the plaid lining? Yes, they did. Just all black. Much better. Speaking of it being a mock toe, got to rank it on the mock tober slash mock vember slash mock simber board. We'll probably finally end it in January. But if I were to rank this on the board, I think it pretty clearly fits above the Kingman, but right below the Thoroughgood. And I think that's a pretty fair spot for this to be at. And keep in mind that this board is based off only quality of materials. It's not based off of value. Basically, it's not, it's not what you get per dollar. It's strict quality. So these lower priced boots are always gonna rank a little bit lower, so keep that in mind. So overall, they're still in my top three boots. I still think I'm gonna be wearing them nonstop, especially as that recovery boot when boots inevitably hurt my feet from breaking in boots nonstop and never actually wearing a comfortable worn in pair of boots. And I think this is a boot that a lot of people have slept on because it's not the most appealing looking boot. It's not the most versatile boot, but for its specific purpose, it's undefeated so far with all the boots we've cut apart. And I'd actually like to do like a barefoot February but I just don't know if there's any interest in that at all. So if you want to see that, let me know, help this video out because that's kind of how we gauge what series we do depending on the success of individual videos that are about the series that we kind of tentatively have planned. So let me know what you guys think and thank you so much for supporting this channel. And I believe the 12 days of Christmas is still going on. So check those out via the links in the description on Instagram and everything else. So thank you guys. See ya.